The focus in this presentation is assessment and grading. In the last lecture, we wrapped up a discussion of feedback with a heavy emphasis on giving formative feedback to increase student learning. Now, we turn our attention to assessment and grading. We could spend days on grading, but I plan to focus only on the basics. Grading guides can help streamline your grading tasks and make your assessments more consistent. Let's take a look at two approaches, the simple checklist and the multidimensional rubric. One of the students in a foundations class created this. Several students responded with, great idea, I'm going to do that too. This is basically a checklist to remind him to look at all of these aspects of a fellow student's exam answer. It's every bit as useful for instructors to use something like this as it is for students. Another student in the same class expanded on the first checklist by adding a column for notes, which he put at the bottom. This is an excellent extension of that first checklist. Now let's take a look at a matrix. By the way, these are commonly called rubrics. Here's a partial example of a discussion rubric I've used in a number of courses. It is intentionally generic, so it can be used across a variety of assignments and courses. In this rubric, we say that the following things count. Responsiveness to the assignment, evidence of expertise, quality of writing, and so forth. Then, across a given row, we describe the different levels of performance. You'll find the complete rubric in the General Information Instructor's Manual. When you prepare to grade, as you will in the next assignment, you'll need to figure out which dimensions count and how different levels of performance will show up in student work. Now that you're interested in the instructor side of grading, be sure to review the grading videos and resources Chem made for the Foundations class.